John Fry, uh, J-O-H-N, that's the Christian name. The surname is Fry, F-R-Y. F-R-Y. What is your birthday? 18th, 11th, 33. I'm sorry? 18th, 18th of, November, 18th of November, 1933. 33. So you were born after the Great Depression. Did you feel it when you were growing up? <laughs> no, no, no. Like, Not really. <laughs> no. Where were you born? Melbourne. Melbourne. I just been there. Yeah. I did a lot of interview there. Right. So, tell me about your family background when you were growing up. Your parents and your siblings. How many siblings did you have uh, at the time? I had a brother and uh, a sister. Just brother and sister. Yeah. Yeah. And how about your family? Uh, yes, uh, father was a father was uh, a pastry cook, and uh, that was uh, about the extent of it. Yeah. I was uh, my education was. Uh, <coughs> I lived in Brunswick, uh, Melbourne and uh, went to uh, school there until year eight. And then uh, I worked in the textile industry. Uh, when was it? When did, you, when did you graduate school? When I finished school. Ah, I, didn't, uh, I haven't done the calculations, but uh, uh, I'm not too uh, sure the actual year. Yeah. But if we do the calculations, we can figure it out. <laughs> right. So you worked in textile industry. Textile industry. And then um, after, well, uh, in 1952, uh, June 1952, uh, I joined the Army. 1952. Yeah. And June, you said, right? June. Yeah. So... Tell me about this. Did you learn anything about Korea from school? Uh, no, not really at school. Like um, uh, <laughs> when I when I was at school, the teacher asked a question. We were on a um, a tram line which went there down to St Kilda Beach. Uh, only half the school ever travelled to the beach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, half the class, the class, you know. So I couldn't figure uh, that out, you know, like uh, why they never ever uh, went to the beach. Yeah, but <laughs> So that's how it was. <laughs> that's how it was. You so know? you never learned anything about Korea? No, uh, no not at school. Not at school. At, uh, at a later uh, stage, at about uh, 16, uh, I, uh, f through a friend of mine, mm -hmm. uh, his uncle was a, a POW in Korea. He was uh, interned by the uh, Japanese in a mine. And... <laughs> Another um, uh, acquaintance. There was no Korean War broke out at the time. No, no, no. This was. Would, but how that how your friend's uncle become the POW of Korean War? No, no, not of the Korean War. Right. But he, he was in thirty nine forty five. Yeah, and uh, he'd been. Uh, I don't know where he was captured, but he was uh, POW of World War Two. Yeah. Yep. Of the Japanese, yeah. Right. And uh, they took him uh, to Korea, and uh, he uh, worked in a mine there. Ah. That's how you come to know of Korea. Partly. The other uh, other one was uh, uh, another friend from a Maltese uh, extraction. His uncle was a missionary in Korea. So <laughs> that was uh, two cases uh, that uh, 
uh, knew of uh, Korea, you know. Otherwise, you didn't know anything. You didn't know where it was, right? Have you been back to Korea after, after the Korean War? Yeah. When did you go back? Uh, roughly five years ago. Five years ago, so yeah. it's about 2014? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And when you go back, when you went back to Korea in 2014, and you saw Korea in 1950, right? 53, yeah. So tell me about it. How different that was to <laughs> you? Well, uh, in 1953, uh, Korea was in tatters. You know, there was hardly uh, uh, a substantial building standing, you know, like uh, and the population uh, around Pusan to uh, Seoul was living in uh, shelters, cardboard uh, boxes with beer cans for... Uh, the tiles, you know, orphans, uh, too many orphans. Yeah. But uh, after, uh, I, when I returned, but oh, in the same uh, case that um, in 1953, as you well know, the one was worthless. You could have a truckload of paper money uh, and you couldn't buy a box of matches. One means Korean currency. <laughs> the, uh, uh, we had uh, CATCOM serving uh, in the battalion and I uh, said to uh, one, it's your pay, you know, like, uh, you're not collecting it. I can't buy anything with uh, my pay. <laughs> so, and then when you went back to Korea 2014, how was it? Oh, unbelievable, you know, like... Uh, uh, the, uh, the... What do you, what do you say, like... Uh, uh, Republic of Korea was reborn uh, from... Uh, uh, 1953, yeah. And uh, in those years, uh, uh, Korea, Republic of Korea has managed their affairs very well, and um, they are now, or then, was in the top ten economies of the world. You know, like. Uh, uh, when you look at Australia, we went backwards. <laughs> 1950, we had a manufacturing industry, full employment, and then uh, it's hard words to say, but um, in the last 60 years, the Australian government have betrayed the, the Australian um, public. Yeah. Uh, when you see what uh, Korea or Republic of Korea has achieved. You know, like uh, we haven't learned anything. Ah. <laughs> but you came to aid of us, and you gave us chance to rebuild our <laughs> nation. That's how we become. Do you know the ranks of Korean economy now? No, I don't. Eleventh largest in the world. Right, the 11 largest yeah. in the world. Do you know the size of the territory of South Korea? Ah, it's only uh, a dot on Australia. Yes. <laughs> you are 78th larger than South Korea. Do you know about population of Korea? Uh, I think it's uh, something like 41 million. Now it's a 51 million. 51 million. Do you know your population? Uh, the last I uh, was informed of it was something like 24 million. Yes. Yeah. So, in terms of population, South Korea is twice of yours. Yeah. But in terms of territorial size, one... One dot. <laughs> yeah, one dot. You are 78th larger than us. Yeah. Yeah. 
And uh, can you believe that country you saw 1950 become 11th largest economy in the world? Uh, well, through that, the uh, Republic of Korea had financial problems. Uh -huh. uh, now, what I'm told, um, they, through the, uh, the global uh, financial uh, crisis, 1997. Republic of Korea owed the, I, the, uh, the International Monetary Fund IMF. a lot of money. Yes. And the government of the day in the Republic of Korea uh, hit on the idea, we'll ask the population to uh, help pay off the debt because, and they did. Now, from uh, that was then, from uh, what I've been told, um, <coughs> the thinking of, uh, or the understanding of the Republic of Korea, they wouldn't be as willing today as what they were. <laughs> That's a very good point to make. <laughs> So, do you know the Australian history textbook? Do they teach about Korean War? Say that again, please. Does uh, Australia teach about the Korean War in their history class? Uh, I'm not uh, aware of that. No. I don't know. Mm. Do you know you've been know, you you know that the Korean War has been known as Forgotten War, right? That's correct. Why is that? I mean, <coughs> look at the country you saw and fought for in 1950 was completely devastated. Now it's 11th largest economy. You couldn't believe when you saw in 2014. No, <laughs> why we don't teach about it? Why has it been known as Forgotten? <laughs> well, probably. <laughs> The easy way out of that question is the government don't want to know, uh, tell the people what's happened. <laughs> Why is that? It would be embarrassing uh, for the Australian government uh, to turn <laughs> <laughs> around and say, look at Korea. It rose from the ashes uh -huh. of 53 to being in the top of 10 economies of the world in uh, 19... <coughs> Uh, or two, uh, 2014, well, we'll settle for that, yeah? That's a very creative answer. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why we are doing this. We are making interviews, right, of Korean War veterans and try to tell our future generation about the war that you fought for and what is the legacy came out of your service. That's why we are doing this. Right. We are making history textbook like this. Right, you know, right, yeah. and give it to teachers so that they can teach about Korea that you fought for, you know, 70 years ago. Yeah. So that's why we are doing this. So let's go back. Let's go back to your. Um, let's go back to your. You said that you joined the army in 1952. 52. And yeah. why did you join the army? Ah. Uh, Unemplo or, uh, unemployment was um, in Australia in 1952, you know, like uh, in the textile industry, uh, they cut back the, uh, uh, from a five day week mm -hmm. to a three day week yeah. to keep people employed, you know. So, uh, uh, the army provided uh, security, uh, for uh, put it that way. So when, where did you get the basic military training? The basic, uh, well, <clears throat> that was at a place called uh, Kapuka, out of out of Wagga Wagga. Could you spell it? <laughs> K A P O O K A. Kipuki. Kapuka. Kapuka. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then, then the, uh, uh, after three months, uh -huh. uh, 
uh, transferred to uh, 2nd Battalion uh, and uh, did uh, infantry training before going to Korea. So you already knew that Korean War broke out at the time, right? Yeah, yeah. Were you nervous that you were going to be dragged into the war? That didn't sort of faze me, you know, like... Uh, <laughs> uh, no, like, uh, uh, it didn't worry me, uh, it was just another posting, yeah. Did you know that you are going to be in the war? Yeah, because <clears throat> when, I, when we were at Kapuka, mm -hmm. there was uh, a sergeant, uh, Jack Morrison, uh, he was a Korean veteran uh, of Cap Dong, you know, mm. and uh, so we were pretty well informed uh, through uh, Jack Morrison, right? Yeah. So the sergeant already were in Korean War in Kapyong, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what did he say about the Korean War? Do you remember anything that he said? Uh, no, no, no specific uh, details, you know, like, um, but it couldn't have been too bad because um, <coughs> he got into trouble. <laughs> and uh, um, so what he, what he, uh, uh, to, to solve his problems uh, at uh, Kapuka, he asked for a transfer back to Korea. Mm. So he had two terms in Korea. Oh, yeah, what's yeah. his name? Jack Morrison. Jack Morrison. Yeah. yeah. So he he went Korea twice. He went there twice. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So after um, infantry training, where did you go, and how did you? When did you go from where to Korea? Uh, we went from uh, Pakapanyul to a. Uh, uh, a siding called Dysart and we went by troop train to Sydney and um, we were transported uh, from Australia to Pusan on the uh, troop ship uh, New Australia. What is it? New Australia. New Australia. Yeah. And was it direct? from Sydney to Busan or was it by way of Japan? Say that again, please. Did you go through Japan to Busan or did you go no, directly no, no, to no. Busan? <coughs> uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure uh, we went uh, direct uh, from Sydney to Busan. Uh -huh. So when, do you remember when did you arrive in Busan? <coughs> it's in my notes. Uh, <clears throat> Could you tell? Yeah. Uh, Around 19... It, it was uh, March anyway. Yeah, like, March? Yeah. March 1953. Yeah. Yeah. And the... Uh, if I don't... <laughs> If I don't write down uh, dates and figures, uh, I'd never remember it. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry about it. Yeah. So it was around March 1953. Is that right? Say again? It was around March 1953. Yeah, yeah. So tell me about Busan that you saw for the first time in your <laughs> life. You never, you never knew about Korea much, right? And no, no, no. Like, uh, they had a welcome committee on the uh, wharf uh, at Pusan. was a, a U.S. Uh, military band uh, playing, uh, oh, playing in uh, welcoming uh, Australian troops. Uh, uh -huh. Uh, to land at Pusan, you know. Then we, uh, from the uh, wharf, we went to a, a transit camp in um, Pusan. Mm -hmm. Spent a couple of days there. Then by train, uh, 
uh, from Pusan uh, uh, headed north. Um, we ended up in um, Camp Casey. Camp Casey? Yeah. So, tell me about the Korea you saw for the first time. What was your impression? What was your image of Korea? Be honest and tell detail to young generations here in Australia. What, is, what was Korea like at the time? Well, to be honest, you know, yeah. like... Uh, be honest, the, please. Yeah, to be honest with you, you know, like, there wasn't much left of uh, South Korea, you know, like... Uh, uh, as I was saying uh, previously, the shelters or the homes were cardboard boxes with uh, beer cans as uh, tiles on the roof. Uh, that was standard. It wasn't just the isolated, uh, and especially around Pusan, you know, like um, that was uh, whole areas or suburbs. That's the way uh, the population were living. You mm. know. But, um, <laughs> The, um, and there's, the villages uh, went, you know, like, uh, uh, it's pretty hard to uh, take away, no matter who goes through the country, takes away, uh, or it's very hard to take away the life of a villager, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, that's, that's the way they lived, you know, like, um, <coughs> In in that in that time of fifty three, if you compared a farming uh, land in Australia to uh, the farms in the uh, Republic of Korea, uh, Australia was uh, farming was easy. Yeah, like the, the farms mainly rice paddies, you know, like. Um, uh, Koreans uh, worked a lot harder and longer, yeah. How about people? Did you see Korean children or Korean people? Yeah, yeah. How do they look at the time? The, uh, uh, I can, uh, here's a... <laughs> Show it to the camera, <laughs> on your chin, on your chin. So, is, did that, did you take that picture? Yeah. Did you take, take the picture? Those, I took those. You uh, took? So yeah. you had a camera at the time? Yeah, I had a, uh, a Kodak Pony 35mm. Wow, this is very original, huh? <laughs> so that's how they look to you, right? Yeah, yeah, that, that was the, uh, uh, the life of uh, the average Korean, you know? Mm. The... Uh, <laughs> And when you went back 2014, they completely looked different, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, like, uh, it was a vast difference. Yeah, you know, mm. like, um, Korea, Republic of Korea in 53 was uh, in a lot of, tr uh, what do you say? Uh, they, <laughs> There was nothing. <laughs> they had nothing. Their money was useless. Uh, and um, from that situation to um, what they are today, it's absolutely amazing of how they um, achieved uh, to be in the top 10 economies of the world. So, what was your unit at the time? Uh, Second Battalion, Royal Australian Regiment. Second Battalion, Royal? RAR. Regiment. Yeah. And company? Uh, in Korea, I was in support company. Support company. Yeah, anti-tank platoon, which uh, ended up being an um, independent Rifle platoon. Mm. 
So you were, your specialty was infantry rifleman. Yeah. So tell me about Camp Casey that you arrived. How was it at the time? What, how was the battle situation at the time? Uh, well, Camp Casey was all tents. The first Commonwealth uh, Division <coughs> was in reserve at Camp Casey. That, um, <laughs> uh, the battalion uh, on the first night, as an infantry battalion, should have uh, been secure. Uh, but we lost the battalion crest on the first night. <laughs> what do you mean? The motto, and uh, on a parade ground, uh -huh. you'd have a uh, emblem of uh, the battalion crest of the second battalion, yeah? So they had that mounted on the, pa the parade ground the first night. The next morning, it was gone. <laughs> oh, really? Who was the enemy? We don't know. You didn't know. <laughs> but the New Zealanders got the blame. <laughs> Why? Well, yeah, they, uh, what do you say, uh, it's sort of sporting to uh, uh, help yourself to uh, vice versa, you know, Australia to New Zealand. So you were adjacent to the New Zealand units? No, not against them. No, 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 but you were there together. You were there together with the soldiers from New Zealand? <laughs> They were in Camp Casey. Yeah. The whole, the whole division was in Camp Casey. I see. Yeah. Okay. And Camp Casey, so it is uh, under the Injun River below? Not far away. Not yeah. far away. Not far away. So it was quite west, right? Uh, it was cold. <laughs> yeah, like uh, that was uh, the tail end of uh, March would be the tail end of winter. Uh, we weren't used to the, the cold, even though we had um, winter clothing um, from Pusan, you know, like uh, it wasn't enough to uh, stop by you feeling cold. Right. No. Australia is hot all, every day. <laughs> <laughs> Not every day, yeah, but uh, uh, anyway. So uh, that was um, Camp Casey, you know, like, I don't know, I can't remember how long we, the division stayed uh, in Camp Casey, <coughs> but um, uh, the Americans uh, supplied the transport uh, for uh, moving uh, the division into the line, yeah. So... <laughs> Tell me about the typical day of your routine. What did you do there in Camp Casey? What, what was your mission and daily routine? Tell me the details. <laughs> uh, well, you were still uh, doing basic uh, training, yeah. And that was about, um, about it, you know. So uh, there was nothing to add. Uh, were there any combat that you were involved? Uh, I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to uh, recollect. Um, we, <coughs> at one, and I think it was after uh, one five nine that uh, there was a um, a combat team of the Republic of Korea, and they put on a uh, a fire display uh, movement. Uh, pretty um, full on, you know. <clears throat> so that could have been uh, when we were at Camp Casey or it could have been in Area 6. Mm. Yeah. So there was no real severe battle going around between us and enemy at the time in, in Camp Casey area? No, like uh, we were... Uh, confined to uh, the camp itself, you know, like we weren't doing road checks or uh, anything other, other than being in Camp Casey. So you were in the support company and you were not in the front line? No, no. Uh, uh, <coughs> sorry. Uh, 
you're sort of jumping ahead. Now, we uh, were in support company as a uh, rifle platoon. We, as a anti-tank platoon, was in the front line. So uh, uh, when we uh, went from Camp Casey, we went to a, a feature called 159, and uh, the, uh, the particular uh, area we were in was uh, christened Ghost Town. <laughs> and uh, uh, one, 159 uh, had its fair share of um, um, battle conditions, put it that way, you <coughs> know, mm -hmm. like... Um, uh, you're here today, gone today. The worst, the worst of the enemies uh, was mud and rats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they talk um, a lot about rats, right? <laughs> so, were there any dangerous moments that you might have lost your life during your service in Korea? Oh, several times. Yeah. Tell me about it. How, how did it happen? Well, <laughs> that 159, uh, that wasn't as vicious as uh, the hook, yeah. But there was a camouflage road that went on the reverse slopes up the valley. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, we had a listening post down, uh, down near the road. So, anyway. <laughs> I was in a, uh, a group of four to go to this uh, listening post uh, on one night. So to find out what's, what you to expect, you know, you had to talk to the, uh, the previous night patrol. Mm -hmm. What happens? Nothing happens down there. <laughs> so we used to get issued a... Um, a bottle of beer a day. Mm. So <laughs> down we went to uh, the listening post. I'm sitting on a, uh, a mound of dirt, about to drink a, uh, a mouthful of beer, and next thing the dirt was spitting up in the air from around me. Up the valley was the Chinese. <laughs> So, um, sniper, I, <laughs> snipers. <Yeah. laughs> so, I I quickly moved off the uh, the mound of dirt to the other side. <laughs> but uh, on the same night, the um, artillery, uh, New Zealand artillery, was firing over uh, to uh, the Chinese. <clears throat> anyway, there was a tank squadron and um, there was a vehicle going in the dark, uh, traveling along this uh, road. You can tell when there's a drop short of artillery. Anyway, uh, the driver in the SDS uh, vehicle, armored car, he died, you know, when I say he died. Uh, he was inside the car and the passenger was outside uh, telling him to keep left or right. He lived, the driver died. Oh. And that was friendly fire. Mm. Friendly fire? Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. That's, that's tragic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And on the same uh, time, on 159, there was, there was uh, action and the people dying and people getting blown away. We also had the um, uh, unfortunate experience. We were out on patrol on the uh, forward slopes and there was Chinese uh, coming across the valley, mm. where you could see them in the moonlight. So they called for machine gun fire. 
The only trouble was we were on the receiving end of uh, the machine gun fire. <laughs> Someone uh, gave the wrong reference. <laughs> mm. What was the most difficult thing, if I ask you to pinpoint during your service, what was the most difficult thing for you? Surviving. <laughs> Did you feel every day threatened? Uh, when you're in the line, yes, you know, like um, you're here today and gone in the next minute. <laughs> uh, that, that, that's no exaggeration, you know, mm. like, um, uh, when, when we, uh, was involved, uh, with the Battle of the Hook, uh, you were under, uh, constant artillery fire and sniper fire, uh, yeah, like, uh, that was just, uh, uh, a vicious uh, time, the, the battalion. Were you in the Battle of Hook? Yeah. Oh, tell yeah. me about it. Where was it and how was it? You were, who was the enemy and so on? Tell me. <coughs> well, to start with, when we took up positions, um, uh, B Company was on the hook itself. Uh, <coughs> Anti-tank platoon was on the lower slopes of the hook, next to the uh, the first uh, the first uh, U.S. Marine detachment on a hill called One One One. You know. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that uh, if you. Uh, you went out on patrol, uh, you could uh, definitely um, look at, uh, have a, contra uh, a confrontation or a contact that night, you know, like, um, uh, so <coughs> you got to know that uh, uh, if you uh, uh, went on Greenfinger, you might not come back. Mm. <laughs> yeah, like, um, but... Uh, uh, I never got to uh, the, the point where as, um, uh, I wouldn't do as what uh, I was instructed to do. Yeah, you just did it, yeah, like, and that's, yeah. Were you able to write letters back to your family? Did you have a girlfriend at the time? Yeah, yeah. You did? Yeah. Ah, 